Good afternoon, everybody. Lots of House of Dragons news this week, so I'm going to hit some of the high points before we get to our trailer breakdown. First, we now know the release is summer 2024. Unfortunately, that means we're still six to eight months away. Second, when George R.R. Martin was asked what House of the Dragons is going to do after the Dance of Dragons, he said he plans to write another book installment in the Fire and Blood series that's going to cover the Black Fire Rebellion and the War of the Usurper. That being said, don't count on seeing this book anytime soon, as Mr. Martin has been notoriously slow with producing new writings, as he's been enjoying his golden years, fresh with all of that Games of Thrones cash. Can't say I blame him. A more likely scenario is that Mr. Martin and HBO will do exactly what they did with the Game of Thrones series. Once House of the Dragon reaches the end of the book Fire and Blood, if Mr. Martin hasn't already finished the new book, he will simply provide them with an outline of events that he'd like to see. This is exactly what he did for the last two seasons of Game of Thrones, but as we all remember, there was a significant drop in quality in those seasons, so fingers crossed. Thank you for bearing with me, and now let's get to the Season 2 trailer. The trailer opens with Rhaenyra standing on the water's edge, looking out and seeing storms end in the distance. This is here to remind us of the events that happened near the end of Season 1. Rhaenyra's son went on a diplomatic mission to Storm End and was killed by Aemon. However, it's when Rhaenyra turns around that we get one of the best scenes from the trailer. On the surface, we see a woman who's coming to terms with the unending sorrow of a mother having just lost a child. But look beyond her pain, look deeper into her eyes or her square jaw. The face behind the mask of sorrow tells us this isn't just a mother that lost a son, but it's a queen who has now found resolve. Till this point, Rhaenyra was doing everything she could to avoid this war. She knew that once the fighting started in earnest, tragedies like the death of her child were inevitable. Rhaenyra was operating from a mother's perspective, but that's a choice she no longer has, and her face tells us that she's found the steel to deal with that reality. What makes House of the Dragon so great is just in this one still shot, we have a character that's more compelling, has more depth, has more nuance than anything we saw in the entirety of Rings of Power. Amazon has never shown me that they are capable of delivering on this level, and that's why House of the Dragon won all those Emmys and Rings of Power is an embarrassment to Tolkien. As the trailer continues, we hear Otto Hightower saying in the background, errors were made in the hours after King Viserys' death. His words transition between two scenes, the one we just spoke about and a scene where Aegon is ascending the throne. Now, we already know that Aemon killing Rhaenyra's son Lucerys was a tragic mistake, and it also foreshadows the huge mistake of allowing Aegon to become king. As we continue, we see a variety of scenes with various armies representing both factions. This is likely setting us up for the Battle of Rook's Rest. Moving forward, we have a flash of Aemon eyeing the Iron Throne. This could be setting up a schism between the two brothers in the green faction itself. Next, we have a little sneak at what looks to be the battle of the twins between Eric and Arik. Now, I'm not going to provide any spoilers on any of these quick hits because it's unnecessary, but there is one more that I wanted to elaborate on. That's this scene with Helena, which is likely related to blood and cheese. Again, not going to go into spoilers here because it's unnecessary. However, I've seen some people comment they think this is going to be the Red Wedding for House of the Dragons. Undoubtedly, the blood and cheese scene is going to be brutal and a tearjerker. I don't think the two will hit the audience in the same way. The impact of The Red Wedding was based on its consequences for the overarching storyline, not necessarily the emotions of each individual being slaughtered in the scene. Blood and cheese, however, just on its face is far more personal. Also, House of the Dragon takes great effort into making us feel the female perspective. If they hold true to form, this is going to serve to narrow the emotional spectrum even more and focus on Reyna. Well, guys, once again, that's it for me. Please subscribe to get all the latest fantasy news from a common sense perspective, and I will see you next time.